Okay, so for today's lesson, we're going to be looking at subtracting and adding mass. So we've looked at what mass is, how we can find mass, how we can compare it, and now we're going to be able to add and subtract it. Okay, so this morning we're going to be starting off again with a flashback. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is tell me uh, the shape that's in the right hand corner. Then you're going to be looking at equivalent fractions. Um, you can use the pictures to help you or you can remember to use um, the kind of burger technique where we can, um, what we do to one side, we do to the other side. Then for number two, you're going to have to compare these. Now, in order to compare them, you're going to need to have to work them out first. So I shall see two lots of working outs to find three quarters of 12 and five eighths 16. Um, and then you can use your great, less than, greater than or equal to to show the answer. And then for number three, you're writing seven tenths as a decimal. So thinking maybe using your column method, uh, columns to show it. And then finally, it's 48 divided by 8, thinking about how you might use this. You might be able to do your time tables or your circle method to show it as well. So have a pause the video now, have a go at showing me that. And then once you've done that, come back to me and we'll see if you've got your working out all correctly. So for the shape, we can see that because it is a, a circle, we know that obviously that would be a circle. However, because they have put um, the dotted line to make it look like it is 3D, we know that if we were to see a circle, like a 3D circle, a football, we would know that this would be a sphere. So please make sure you've spelt it right. Um, it does sound a little bit funny to say, but it's sphere. Fantastic. OK, right, let's have a look at number one. So number one, complete the equivalent fractions. So three twelfths is equivalent to one something. So you could have used the picture to help you to show what the three twelfths look like and how this is equivalent um, to um, the other part. Now, we could have also have done our method to see how do I get from three to one? Because remember, we're going this way. So how do I get from three to one? Well, I'm not times in, I'm dividing. How many times does one go into three? One, two, three. So I'm dividing by three. So if I've divided the top side by 3, I'm going to divide my bottom, my denominator, by 3. So 12 divided by 3. How many 3s go into 12? 3, 6, 9, 12. I know the answer is 4, which is why on the picture um, of that you've got on the screen there, you can see that there are four parts and one part is shaded. OK, let's have a look at number 2. So number 2 is we need to compare the two um amounts however the first thing we need to do is work it out so the first thing you should have done is you should have found three quarters of 12. so remember we need to do 12 divided by 4 because 12 is our total number and we have got four parts and you could have done your four parts to show this and you could have dotted it 12 times or we could do 12 divided by 4 4 8 12 there's three lots in each so each part would be worth because if we check it, 3, 6, 9, 12. However, your answer is not going to be 3 for this part because if we look, we need 3 lots. So we need 3 lots of, and there's 3 in each, so we can do 3 times 3 to find your answer would be 9. So we know that 3 quarters of 12 is 9, but we still haven't finished. We now have to do the other part. So, I'm going to draw a line between that. So that's my first section. So now I should be finding five, six of, sorry, five eighths of 16. Okay, so again, we know that I'm going to be doing 16 because that's my total number. And I'm going to divide it by eight because that is my number of parts. So I could have done eight circles, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I could have shared out my 16. So I could have dotted 16 times or I could do um, 16 divided by eight. So if I count with my eights, eight, 16, I know that each part is going to be worth two. So I can write two in each part. So However, my answer is not going to be two because if I now look at the question, the question is asking for five parts. So I want to know five lots of, 
So one, two, three, four, five. How many is in each part? Well, there's two in each part, so I'm going to do five times two, which I would get my answer of 10. So my answer would be 10. Now, now I can compare it. So three quarters of 12 equals nine. Five six of 18 equals 10. So what am I going to use? I am going to use um, a less than, so it should read something like this. So what you should have wrote nine under there, 10 under there. So I know that it should say less than, so it should say three quarters of 12 is less than five eighths of 16. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to give you another one of these to have a go at practicing. So please can you um, have a go at doing this following question? I'm just going to show it now. So can you have a go at this question? So three quarter, uh, sorry, three fifths of 15 is something to two sixths of 18. So can you go, just like we did with the previous one, like this, can you go and show me our two different workings out? Once you have got your answers, write your numbers underneath so you can see what your sign is going to be. So please have a pause of the question now. Please now have a go at doing this and then play it as soon as you have got your answer and we will see if you have got it correct. So let's have a look. So I'm going to first of all find three, three fifths of a 15. So I know that I've got 15 is my total number. I've got five parts which I want to share it between. So one, two, three, four, five. Or I could just do 15 divided by five is three. Because three, five, 10, 15. So I'll write three in each part. Now I need to look. Right, well I want to find three parts. So I can do three lots of. There's three in each part. Or I can circle it. And I know three times three is nine, so I can write nine under there. Now I'm going to have a look at the other side. So I've got two sixths of 18. So I know I've got 18 and I want to share it between six parts because that's my denominator. How many six is going to 18? Six, 12, 18. So I've got three again in each part. Oops. But if I look at my question, remember now I'm wanting two parts. So I'm wanting two lots of three because there's three in each. So my answer would be six. So now I can say, see which number is bigger. Well, I know nine is greater than um, six. So I would put my greater than sign. So it would read three fifths of 15 is greater than two sixths of 18. If you haven't quite understood that, please have a look at my working out now. Please pause the video and make sure that you understand it um, before having playing the video and looking at the next question. Okay, question three. Write seven tenths as a decimal. So again, we're going to need to write our columns. Hundred tens one, our decimal point. And remember our tenths, and you can always write your hundreds after. So if I'm writing seven tenths, I'm looking at I'm going to be in my tenths column. So I need to look in my tenths column. I need to now look at my numerator. My numerator says seven. So seven is going to be in the tenths column. However, remember, we need to bring our decimal point down and we can't just have 0.7. If there's nothing before the decimal point, we must fill it in with a zero. So you should have got 0 0.7. OK, and finally, our last question was 48 and we want to divide 48 divided by 8. You could have just wrote out your 8 times table underneath. Alternatively, you could have done 8 circles for 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you could have shared 8 48 times 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. And if I count how many are in each, you will have found the answer was six. 
There should be six in each, so your answer should be 48 divided by 8 is 6. Alternatively, as I said, you could always have done your 8 times table, counted up 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48 to find your answer. So a quick recap, grams and kilograms um, are what we use to weigh different objects, especially when we're baking or cooking. And we know that there are a thousand grams in a kilogram because a kilo it means a thousand. So we're going to have a go at adding um, mass. Now there are a few different ways that I'm going to show you that you might want to use and then you can decide which way you want to choose when you go to answer your question and which one's going to work best for you. Okay, so looking at the first question, one method you could do. So the first method you could do is you could add your um, kilograms. So you could do three kilograms, add four kilograms, which we know will be nice and easy, it's going to be seven kilograms. So once I have added my kilograms, I can now add my grams. So I can do 450 grams, add 200 grams, which I know the answer would be 650 grams. You might want to also use comma method if you don't know. So then if I add my seven kilograms to my 650 grams, I will find the answer will be seven kilograms and 650 grams. Alternatively, we could have said that um, that will be 7,650 grams or 7.65 kilograms. So that's one method. I'm going to show you a different method now. So the second method what you could do is we can convert them. So we can put them both into um, grams. So for example, I already know I've got 450 grams, but I've also got three kilograms. I know that in one kilogram there is a thousand grams, so in three kilogram I'm going to have three thousand plus my four hundred and fifty, so I'm going to have three thousand four hundred and fifty grams on this side. Now I can do the same with this side. I know that there are a thousand kilogram a thousand grams in a kilogram, so in four kilograms I'm going to have four thousand, and I have got two hundred grams also, so I can do four thousand two hundred grams. Now, once you have got this, you could actually go and do your column method. You could actually go and do your column method, starting your ones, adding everything up to find the answer is 7,650 grams or 7 kilograms, 650 grams or 7.65 kilograms. So I'd like you to now have a go at doing numbers two and three, four um, might be a little bit tricky because there might be some where there's going to exchange, it's going to go over. So have a go at questions two, three, and four, and then we'll go through the answers. So let's have a look then at our answers for number two. So for number two, you could have used either convert them both to 4,105 and 2,300 and added them together. Alternatively, you could have added your kilograms first, four or two is six, your um, grams after 105 and 100 is 205. If you put those two together, you should have had six kilograms, 205 grams. Alternatively, you might have got 6,205 grams or 6.205 kilograms. So well done if you've got those correct. Okay, so for the third question, we have got four kilograms, 400, or you could have done 4,400, add 2,100, and we use your working out to find out the answer would have been 6,500 grams. Alternatively, you could have done four, add two is six, 400 add 100 is 500 grams, so it would be 6 kilograms, 500 grams, or 6.5 kilograms. So, number four is, you might have spotted this straight away, because if you had added your 8 kilogram and your 1 kilogram, you would have got 9 kilograms, but then you had 600 add 550. Now, this is going to exchange. So for this one, I would actually suggest converting would be easier. So I know there's 8,000 grams in 8 kilograms. So it's going to be 8,600 add 1,550. So if I then do my column method, 
hat. I can do 0, 0 is 0, 0 add 5 is 5, 6 add 5 is 11, 8 add 1 is 9, add your 1 which is 10. So I know that it is going to be, I'm going to have 10 kilograms, 1050 grams because remember a three digit number is going to be grams so i've got one two three and i've got my left over for my kilograms alternatively you could have had 10.15 kilograms as well now you might have a question that looks something like this so adding the mass so adding the object so what is the total remember if you're looking for the total you're looking for the bigger number so i'm going to find the total of these three numbers now in order to do that I'm going to add the three numbers together. Now you can either do column method and add them all up, or you could add two numbers first and then add your third one after them. So I'm going to use column method to do this. I'm going to add my two biggest numbers first, 102 and 57, which if I add together, that's a nice easy one because there's no exchanging. Now I'm going to use the answer to start it off. And then I need to add the last number. So th adding 39, I should get the answer, 198 grams, which will be my total. So just because it is a three, three numbers to add, so you don't know do any differently, you add your two numbers first and then add the final one after. Okay, so this time we're subtracting. So we're going to have a look to see at the different methods that we could use for this one. Okay, so for this one, we could still do the similar method we've used before. So I could do eight kilograms and I could take away one kilogram. So I'm doing my kilograms first, which I know is going to be seven kilograms. I could then do my grams, 600 grams, take away 500 grams, which I know is going to be 100 grams. So my answer is going to be seven kilograms, 100 grams would be my answer. Now, when it gets to take away, it does make, it can get a little bit confusing, especially if sometimes we can't take things away. So this would also be an opportunity for you to convert. So remember, there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. So in eight kilograms, it's going to be 8,000 and I've got 600 grams left. Take away 1,500 grams. So if I did my column method for this one, I worked it out nice and quickly. I'm going to find that my answer is 7,100 grams, which is what I just got. So have a go now at doing the next three, and then we're going to go through the answers. Think about which ones you will be able to do this method for, and which ones you'll need, you can do the other method for as well. So if I have a look at the first one, so or the second question even, I have done the method of doing, I've taken away my nine, take away two kilograms, which is seven kilograms. I've done 800, take away 400, which is 400 grams. So my answer should be seven kilograms, 400 grams. Alternatively, you could have done 9,800, take away 2,400, which you would have got 7,400 grams or 7.4 kilograms. Similarly, on number three, I have used um, the method where I can use it. Alternatively, you could have used column method. So I've done seven kilograms, take away four kilograms, which is three kilograms. I've done 350 grams, take away 125 grams, which is 225 grams. And then I know my answer is going to be three kilograms, 225 grams. Alternatively, you could have done 7,350, take away 4,125 which would get you the answer 3,225, oops, 25, that's meant to be there, or 3.225. Okay, for number four, you might have found that one method isn't quite great because I can do eight kilograms take away four kilograms. However, I cannot do 200 take away 800. So for this method, it's best to convert so that you've got 8,200 take away 4,000 800 and then I would use my column method so I would do zero take away zero is zero zero take away zero is zero two take away eight I cannot do so I'm going to have to cross off my eight turn it into a seven and put a little one 
So now I've got 12 take away 8 is 4, 7 take away 4 is 3. So I will have 3,400 grams or 3.4 kilograms or 3 kilograms 400 grams. Now you might get some questions where there are problems. So for example, a bowl of fruit weighed 2 kilograms and 350 grams. So all the fruit is in the bowl and it weighs that much. Now, once the fruit was eaten, the bowl weighed 600 grams. So we want to know how much did the fruit weigh? So I know before the fruit and the bowl weighed two kilograms, 350 grams. And I know at the end, my fruit, uh, my bowl, sorry, was going to equal 600 grams. So I'm, I'm, I can work this out by finding a smaller number. So I'm going to take away. So I'm going to take away the bowl, first of all, and that will tell me how much fruit has been eaten. So in order to do that, I'm going to convert 2,350 grams from two kilograms, 350. I'm then get, now, I can now take away 600 grams. And when I've worked that out, I can work out that the answer is going to be 1,750 grams or one kilogram, 750 grams. So you must work it and think, are you trying to find a bigger number? So are you going to add or are you trying to find a smaller number? So you're taking away. So I'd now like you to answer these questions and read the questions really carefully because some are adding and some are subtracting. Once you've had a go at doing that, have a look at the answers. I'm going to talk through the answers um, and you can correct them or mark them um, and then you can show me them on Seesaw once you're finished. So for question one, we've got what is the weight of the apple? So if you've read the um, weighing scales, you can see that the apple weighs 100 grams. You can see the banana weighs 200 grams. And if we want to know the total, we need to add these two numbers together. So 100 add 200 is 300 grams. For part two, it says what is the total weight of the ingredients? So I can add four kilograms, add two is six kilograms, add your one is seven kilograms. For the next part, we needed to, um, Ron puts both objects on the scale and he wants to know the total mass, the total weight. So you'll need to add them. First of all, work out that the book is going to be 1.2 kilograms and the computer is going to be 2.6 kilograms. So if you added those two numbers together, you would have got three kilograms and 800 grams. Uh, for the next question, Alicia is weighing out some cereal. First, she puts the bowl on the scales, then she pours, in this, out the cereal, pours out the cereal. So what is the weight of the cereal? Now, you need us to first of all look. Now, the bowl is on the scale and the bowl actually weighs 100 grams. And the actual, the cereal, the cereal doesn't weigh 300 grams. It's saying it weighs 300 grams, but it's also including the bowl at 100 grams. So you should have done 300 take you could have either counted up from 100 to 300 to find the answer 200 or you could have done 300 take away 100 which is 200. For part five a dog weighs eight kilograms and 200 gram when it is eight weeks old the same dog weighs 12 kilograms and 900 grams when it is 12 weeks old. What is the difference between um, the dog's weight from eight to 12 weeks. Now remember when we're doing difference, we want to use the takeaway. So you should have used 12 kilograms, 900 grams, takeaway, eight kilograms, 200 grams, which should have got you the answer, four kilograms, 700 grams. Okay, the next part, the mass of the tin is 450 grams. The mass of the book is 300 grams. Draw books on the scales to show the balance of the tins. So if two tins weigh, one weighs 450, 
2 will weigh double that, so um, 45 add 45 is 90. Put your zero on the end, 900. How many lots of 300 go up into 900? Take your zeros off, counting threes, three, six, nine. So 300, 600, 900. So you should have drawn three books on. For number seven, um, have a look at the answers there. You could have done your working out either um, the two different ways that we spoke about um, to work out those answers. And then for number eight, Tommy and Rosie are working out the total weight of the box and the suitcase. Um, so what I would suggest doing to find out the total, you'll need to add um, them two together. So four kilograms add one kilogram is five kilograms. 700 add 500 is 1,200. So the answer should be six um, kilograms, 200 grams. But um, so Ruth, uh, so um, Rosie would be correct. However, Tommy is also correct because it is still five kilograms and 1,200 grams, but he just hasn't added them together. So you would say that both are correct.